What are you so nervous about? I'm always nervous. Okay, let me just. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it's not on me. I'm like. <laughs> I feel like we should have like had a shot of tequila for you or something. I don't even drink. Well, then that wouldn't have worked. <laughs> What is going on, CBV? Chris Van Vliet here. Thank you so much for subscribing. It'd be awesome if you liked this video and left a comment below. I read all the comments, even the not so nice comments that a few of you guys leave for some reason. Or like when you call me Chris Van Vla. But in my last interview with Ken Shamrock, some of you who were very intently like studying the background and looking at my house for some reason, noticed that the winged eagle title behind me was a little bit crooked. So not only did I straighten that thing out, I replaced it with a completely different title. I wonder if you'd even notice if I didn't tell you. Yes, this is the big gold. This one signed by Goldberg. Thank you for checking out this interview with Sunny Kiss. A big thank you to Coinmaster for sponsoring this video. And I'm incredibly addicted to this game right now. Uh, it's a totally free social game that's taking mobile gaming to a whole new level of fun. You can log in on Facebook and play with your friends by building your village and being nice and giving them gifts. Or I'm gonna be honest, the best part of the game is when you attack their village and raid them and take all their coins. Like, take a look at this. I just raided Larissa. Take that, Larissa. Hopefully she doesn't get me back anytime soon. Coin Master is the most downloaded game in the UK in 2019. That's pretty darn impressive. You're gonna to wanna to get in now though because the game is growing super fast. So you get in now, you get a head start on all your friends who are gonna be joining the game uh, really soon here. There's also a tournament going on right now where you can win some crazy rewards. Download Coin Master only from my link in the description below and you'll get 300,000 coins and 50 slot spins so you can get started on your first village. The question is, do you have what it takes to be the next Coin Master? Uh, you can find me on Coin Master. My username is Chris, a very original username, uh, Chris. Uh, so big thank you to Coin Master for sponsoring this video. Now please say hello to Sunny Kiss. Okay, yeah, yeah, right. yeah. okay, good. That was a test, wasn't it? Yeah. Yeah, good, that's good. it. Um, well, congratulations on everything. Thank you. Uh, thank you for making the time to do this. Thank you. It's all out weekend. It's all out morning, I guess that's what we can yeah, call it. Yeah, yeah. So it's like Christmas morning, but I for all I figured it was out. the best time, too, because, you know, there was Starcast and a bunch of other stuff going on. So I was like, okay, right. Saturday morning, it'll be the time. And then you're going straight from here to uh, the Sears Center and then... This, this is the show tonight. Mm -hmm. You're not you're not on the card right now. I know. So that means you get to watch it. Like, and be a fan, which I love to do. So. Yeah. Have you been a wrestling fan your entire life? Absolutely. Uh, the funny thing is I actually started playing the video games first. Okay. Um, so which ones? Revenge. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it was mm -hmm. the first ever game I played, and it was my introduction to wrestling because my brother and my cousins were all playing it. And I thought, this was, oh, this is cool. And I thought AKI Man was a real person. <laughs> <laughs> the funniest thing. So yeah, that's my introduction, and then I've always loved it as a kid and watched. So you it. were you were playing the video games before you actually watched? Yes, on TV. Yeah. Wow. Yeah, it's such a weird thing, but that I, <laughs> that seems backwards. It was very, why would you, very backwards. Why would you be interested in the video games? I have no idea. Um, it was just a weird thing. I like, huh. just, I saw like Rey Mysterio doing all those like cruiserweight moves in the game. I thought that was like the coolest thing. So was that the kind of the person that when you did start watching wrestling, you're like, oh, Rey's the man. Uh yeah, Ray, um, RVD. I'm a big uh, fan of RVD. I love uh, Lita, Trish. Trish is a major influence to me. Uh, Jacqueline, people mm -hmm. like that. So, mm -hmm. yeah. And uh, now, who are the, some of the people that you look up to? Uh, still the same people. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah, I I love all the LGBT workers that are wrestling too. I look up to them because I you know this business is hard as it is. So seeing them be fearless is really cool. It's but I mean LGBT has been it, it's been in wrestling for a while. Yes. But what's your take on how it was originally presented 20-ish years ago? Uh, Eric Bischoff had HLA. Do you remember that? Yes. And then we had Billy and Chuck. What was your take on that compared to, obviously, how it's evolved now? Uh, the authenticity, sure. <laughs> for sure. Uh, back then it was all character stuff it was all goofy oh ha 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 like billy and chuck you know that whole thing was like just uh, uh it was something to laugh at it was you know it was for comedy relief so i feel like um now it's a lot more authenticity so um that's the major difference here and uh we're not just characters or gimmicks quote unquote this is really who we are yeah when i first started wrestling uh they would say like 
I feel like you're holding back. Like you should do like wigs and you know, like put on some like heavy makeup and like all that craziness. But I'm just like, uh, there are people that are actually just like this. Like we're not like, I'm not trying to be, <laughs> you know, yeah. something I'm not. This is what, this is what it is. This is, this is how people actually are. Like there are feminine men in the world. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, so, th so this isn't a gimmick for you. Not at all. Yeah. At Cause all. I think a lot of people think like, oh, you're gay. So your gimmick is mm -hmm. you're gay. For sure. But that's just, I mean, it, it seems like it seems so ridiculous to be saying it, but that's just who you are. Yes. That's like saying MJF's, you know, just a dick. But no, that's just who he is in real life. Yeah. For sure. <laughs> <laughs> but like, were, were you always this comfortable? He loves me, though. So. He, I don't know. He doesn't really love anyone. Though. Yeah. <laughs> Does he? Uh, I don't know. Have you always been this comfortable in who you are and the skin that you're in? Yes and no. I mean, I have like the insecurities of everybody else. Like everyone has them. But overall, um, as far as my sexuality, I was comfortable with that, but still not comfortable. Uh, how do I explain this? Okay. So like being myself in the world that we live in, sometimes you kind of like hold back a little bit. Um, you're, you're a little more afraid. But as far as like to my friends, to my family, I was never, ever uncomfortable. Like, I've always was confident in who I was. Did, did it take, like, something that happened in your life or a certain age when you were like, I'm okay with, you know, presenting this out there and, and putting this out to, to the world? I was very open, like, when sexuality was, like, in, like, single digits. I would say, like, wow. eight, eight or nine years old. <laughs> okay. Yeah. So I knew about myself when I was in, like, kindergarten. So um, I wasn't really shocked. It, it, like, some people kind of, like, have... Um, problems coming to terms with it mm -hmm. uh, that's why I could like commend a lot of like LGBT workers or L people in general who come out at the age of like 30 because like that's like holding something in for sure. so long yeah but me like my mom embraced me since I was like you know five six seven eight years old right so, like very very early like I knew and um yeah I just knew like I didn't really did like, you have to have a moment with your mom where you're like where you like Oh, the coming out story. Out. Yeah. I did not have that. It was um straight up like uh I, I, brought my, I brought my boyfriend over maybe like 2019 and it was like um she's like 2019. I'm oh, sorry, 2009. Oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> I was like 15. Okay. I was like, what am I saying? <laughs> sorry, that's that's the nerves. So um 2009, yeah, I had my first boyfriend, my first real boyfriend, and I brought him over and she was like, who's that your boyfriend? And I was like, yeah, that's literally the story. <laughs> that's <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And she was like, yeah, I, I, I kind of, you know, I knew. Yeah, like. My whole family knew. Yeah, yeah, they they had arguments about it, like, in the early years. But after a while, they kind of like, whatever. Now, how do you decide what color hair you want to have? <laughs> uh, like, as far as, like, me being blonde? Well, yeah, I mean, you could be any color. <laughs> um, I don't think that any other color would work. I feel like it's uh too much. You say that now, and then we're going to watch this interview back in, like, a year, and you're going to have, like. <laughs> green hair or I was pink actually hair. thinking of having like pink hair like See? Like, like the singer pink uh, This is what I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> I was like nah. Mm -mm. You say that now. Just blonde blonde is like I've had blonde hair since maybe 4 or 5 years now so. You like I said you say that now. <laughs> it's, it's you know it might be a different uh, scenario in a year or two who knows. Yeah. You could maybe. you could match your hair to your ring attire. Um at a one point it was uh there was like this gear of mine that was like orangey like kind of like I, yeah, it was like orangey, golden ish, mm -hmm. and it was like basically like my mm -hmm. hair. It was pretty cool. When you did this, I noticed your engagement ring. Congratulations. Oh, uh, thanks. <laughs> oh, what? Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I just, oh, like, now you're getting more no, nervous. No, because like I don't really talk about it too often. <laughs> oh, well, it's 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 on display here. I know, I know, I know. I guess you could do the interview like this. <laughs> I know, right? You know? I, I get really shy talking about it. Oh, really? I just get really shy, you know, about certain things when I get put on the spot. Oh, well, congratulations yeah, somebody, on that. A couple of other wrestlers pointed it out, and I was just like, oh, thanks. I, 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 we didn't really announce it. It kind of was just a thing um well he put it on twitter well that's announcing the, it well in the whole <laughs> i know but when the whole like he didn't like we didn't we never had like a uh okay we're engaged now kind of thing it was just kind of like my fiance like he said that um on twitter when the whole jim Cornette thing happened so right yeah that and that seems so ridiculous uh was i was actually not affected by it at all really i mean initially i was talked about it once w once people started like going crazy about it and tweeting and like taking his words and you know just you know continuously continuously like retweeting and re-putting it out there mm -hmm. uh, I was, I was kind of over it at that point um but as far as like the initial like what he said in, in the video I was kind of just like oh my god whatever like I've heard I've heard this my whole life so. sure but and how do you deal with that hearing it your whole life um I'm used to it now so I kind of just laugh it off that doesn't mean it's not 
you know, hurtful. It is. It is hurtful. Um, I, I don't know. I, I just reflect on my life. I look, I look back and I reflect on like my life and where I've come from and who I am now. So, mm -hmm. and I like see that as like a, you know, kind of like a testament, like a strength, you know? So it's kind of like, whatever. Well, when we look at that match at Fight for the Fallen, your intro, your, your, your entrance was amazing. Oh, thank you. So how much time, <laughs> effort, planning went into that? Um, it was, uh, I, I asked for it like a couple of months prior and Brandy was like, I'll see, I'll see. You She's know. like, I know a guy yeah. who's in with the Jacksonville Jaguars. <laughs> um, I have a dance background, obviously. Yep. Um, so I brought it up to Brandy and I was like, Hey, can I get the Jacks cheerleaders, um, to do an entrance with me, do a performance with me? And she was like, Oh, we'll see, we'll see, we'll see. And then they had to get it approved. The funny thing is they actually got it approved and they, they didn't tell me about it until a couple of days prior to the event. So I had to like scram to choreograph this routine uh, did you choreograph? I did. I did. Oh, okay. I, had to cho I just crammed the cho choreograph the routine. I did it in like, you know, like 20 minutes at my house. And then I was like, okay, Brandy, I got it. I, no, I think I told Cody. I was like, Cody, I got it. I got it. I got it. And um, I was like, let's see if we can get the girls, coordinate mm -hmm. something with the girls. And then it happened. So they got, you know, obviously you guys had to practice this. Um, we not had, just the day we of. We had 30 minutes. I no. Mean, no, seriously. We did, not, we did not have a lot of time at all to uh, do that routine. Well, they looked great. Yeah. I was actually like like shocked like i was like oh my god because like we were like um not shocked at the girls because obviously they're professional cheerleaders so i'm not shocked at them but the, the way it like all went together it was like oh my god it came together so well yeah and it was perfect because like we did not have a lot of time to rehearse it so i was like i think it was the nerves more so talking like oh my god oh my god you'd have a lot of time to rehearse this what are you so nervous about i'm always nervous. okay let me just <laughs> yeah, it's not, I mean, I'm like, <laughs> I feel like we should have like had a shot of tequila for you or something. I don't even drink. Well, then that wouldn't have worked. <laughs> yeah, um, I don't know what it is. I I think when somebody says like action and like talk, we didn't say action. But I didn't. You know I mean? We just started talking like we do. Uh, right. Which yeah, I noticed. But still, it was like <laughs> it was like uh, okay, we're rolling now. It's like because imagine how much more nervous you'd be if I went. Well, ladies and gentlemen, it's <laughs> such a pleasure to be sitting down with AEW superstar. Sunny kiss and Sonny, how are you today? <laughs> I always right? do so bad with that because I'm just like, uh, good, how are you? And then you say, good. Yeah, yeah I'm good. And I'll say, like, okay, yeah, uh, no, I'll repeat it back to them. Like, I'm good too. Good, how are you? <laughs> it's like such a weird thing. Like, I'm so, so shy. It is. Always? Mm -hmm. always? Well, not, like not in the ring though. Okay, so like I said, performing is different than like talking. This like, is a performance speak, though. It is, but speaking and like public speaking, like I get so shy. So what's going to happen when you have to cut promos? Um, I just have to continue to practice. Because it's a performance. Yeah, for sure. That'll be different. I'm like, oh my God, the worst. That's You're already getting nervous thinking about this. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> Chris is not doing a good job at making me feel comfortable. No, no. I'm, <laughs> I'm just. I'm no, not you're great. You. You're, you're, you're going to do. Awesome. You've been doing awesome. Thank you. It's been amazing. I'm trying, I'm trying. Although Tommy Dreamer eliminated you in the yeah, battle royale. Oh, Tommy. I love him now. He like uh, really spoke about, spoke on me and defended me when it came to the whole situation. So it's hard to not love Tommy Dreamer. Yeah. He's like everybody's wrestling uncle. I feel he like. is. He's, a, he's one of my favorite uh, wrestlers, mentor. Kelly, yeah. Kelly Kelly. I like, I love her. <laughs> Kelly, Kelly, Kelly Kelly was on the show. Recently. I actually watched you guys interview. You did? Oh, well, I'm a fan of your show. So. <laughs> uh, now I'm getting nervous. I, yeah. Thank you. <laughs> I actually watched a lot of your interviews. I watched it with Jungle Boy, which is stars. I watched it a lot. Oh my God. So many. Yeah, Thank you. One, so. Most people I have to like explain. Like, oh no. I here's watched. Here's who I am. Here's who I've your... interviewed. And they're like, yeah, I guess. I guess we can make some time. I've been to watch your interviews sometimes. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Do you subscribe as well? Uh, do I? I'm pretty sure I do. <laughs> I'm pretty no, sure I'm I do. Sure you do. Thank and thank you for that. I'm a big fan of yours. Thank you. Um, when you look at the AEW roster, who is on, who's on there that you're like, I can't wait to do something with them. A lot of people. Uh, I mean, we're still Boy, early on, so yeah. Jungle Boy for sure. Um, <laughs> Private Party. I actually like pitched to like manage Private Party. I wanted to do like a whole like thing with them. Mm. Um, so that would have been cool. Um. Yeah, a lot but of then if you manage that. them, you couldn't be in the ring as much. Yeah, but I like, I, I would like occasionally do like get in the ring and do stuff, kind of like Hardy Boys and Lita kind of thing. Okay. So like something like that. Yeah, yeah. That would be really cool. Yeah, yeah. I, I saw in another interview you were talking about how Rico um, kind of paved the way or helped you know pave the way being flamboyant with his character. Well, what I was <laughs> saying in that interview was um, that these are characters that yeah. people look at and they think is like the blueprint for like what LGBTQ wrestlers should be. 
when you know they're not authentically you know gay and we explained yesterday in the wrestling with wrestling with stereotypes um panel that like Goldust is like he wasn't like no one looked at him and said Goldust is gay like it was just kind of like it's just a character yeah like, he's just a you know freakishly amazing character <laughs> right um so people think that that's the blueprint for what lgbtq wrestling should be and it's like no like we're authentically us and um you know, like Velveteen Dream and a bunch of other people. Like I that. mean, Darren Young was on that panel. Right, and yeah. He's a friend of mine. He he okay. kind of paved his own way by going, yeah, I'm gay, but that doesn't change anything yeah. about my character. I like how like subtle he was about it. It was just kind of like, yeah, this is what it is. Like, because, you know, the whole TMZ thing, then he was following him. And I was just like, he like, he didn't even like, it was just kind of like, whatever. Like, yeah, he was yeah, just I'm like, gay. yeah, here it is. Yeah. <laughs> and I definitely was like, oh, my God, this is so cool. When I first happened, I thought like, wow, like this is because I was like, Ting, I wanted to be the first gay. Wrestler. <laughs> but it was also like, this is so cool. Like I props to Re uh, Fred for that. So, yeah, he's That's a, actually really cool. Uh, he's a great guy. How, how have you and Killian been received when because like, you guys were working together in Lucha? Yeah. Oh, uh, wait, no, we we don't oh, actually Lucha now. No, that's right. You aren't. But you, <laughs> yeah, but he wasn't signed to Lucha. Actually, someone else actually asked that the other day. It's like, is Killian signed too? It's like, no. <laughs> is he signed anywhere? No. Well, you got to make this happen then. I got to make this happen. Oh, I can't make it. Happen. <laughs> he put the pressure on me. <laughs> uh, I think he will. Um, he will. He's doing his thing. Like, and he works extremely, extremely hard. So I feel like eventually, um, it's only a matter of time. You know, when you type his name in, the actor. Killian yeah. Murphy comes up. Killian Murphy. Well, it's actually Killian McMurphy. I, yeah, well, yeah. 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 <laughs> but but like it's like, did you mean? I'm like, no, I did not mean that. Uh, yeah. Yeah. I forgot what he came up uh, with McMurphy, but I know Killian is his actual shoot uh, name. So hmm. yeah. How did uh, AEW come together for you? Um, Brandy. She slid into my DM. <laughs> <laughs> I always tell a story like that. I mean, because it's actually true, but it's just on funny to say it like that uh, on Instagram. Okay. And she would, she goes, are you signed anywhere? And I told her about my contract with Lucha Underground. Mm -hmm. And so um, she was like, well, how long is the contract? And I told her about all that stuff. And <laughs> and uh, yeah, so here we are now. <laughs> so Brandy reached out to you. Mm -hmm. What was your feeling when you first saw that? Because you, you had met her before, I understand. Uh, yeah, I met her at like Ring of Honor and like other indie shows and stuff like that. And then eventually she just led into my DMs. But it wasn't like someone you spoke with mm -mm. a lot. No. So then when you like saw the notification, like, Brandy Rhodes has sent you a message. What's going through your mind? Uh, I freaked out. I, I initially thought it was like an all in too. Like okay. A, yeah, because at first uh, it was kind of just all in. That was the only thing that was a thing. And then yeah. I didn't know about AEW until January, obviously. So I was like, okay, all in too. I'm going to be doing all in too. And then she's like, no, like, are you in a contract with someone? Like, I don't want to, you know. Yeah. <laughs> well, how much has changed for you as a person and also as a wrestler? Since that announcement in January, um, it's been amazing. Like it's knowing that I'm about to be like a part of like a revolution as far as like LGBTQ uh, plus workers and things like that. I think that that's like the part that's like the most like, oh my god, you know what I mean? Uh, it's it's been amazing. Have like, you received like? I'm sure you do. You get messages, tweets all the time yeah. from people. Uh, up and coming workers, yeah. fans. Like, you, you're kind of, you know, you're leading the charge on this. Yes. You've opened the door for a lot of people. For sure. Um, and I think that that's something that you've got to be really proud of. Yeah, I I think it's, I, I can't even fathom it sometimes. I'm just like, oh my God, like I'm about to be like on national television. It's like the coolest thing. If you had to explain your character to someone who hasn't seen a Sunny Kiss match, what would you say to them? Um have an open mind okay. and, and be ready. <laughs> <laughs> now, if someone hasn't seen a Sunny Kiss match, what's one that you're super proud of that we should look up right now on YouTube? And, and that would be a really good indication of what you can do in the ring. Um, Sunny yeah. Kiss versus Jack Evans, for sure. Because mm. Jack Evans is, I think he's a wrestling god. I think he's one of the best to ever do it. And um, he really, really like made me a star. So. so imagine you guys get together on TNT. I would love that. Well, I'm sure this can happen. I'm pretty sure it could. Yeah. I mean, he's a tag. He's in a tag team now, so. But you know, it might not always be, or they could break off and do singles. Maybe, stuff. but I would love that. You know, somewhere down the line. Who uh, who's been a wrestler that you've met, and been like, oh my god, I can't believe I'm meeting so and so. <laughs> Almost everyone that I've met, from Kelly Kelly to Jazz, <laughs> you know, people like that. Um, a lot of wrestlers like. I, I'm like a fan fan, so 
Yeah, I and think now, I was everyone I've met. Well, now that Dustin done. Rhodes is working with AEW, that was really really cool. Uh, have you got any insight from him, or have you have you spoken to him? Yeah, he like okay, he told this story. I I think it was somewhere um in the media where he was like um that I came into their room and I was like super duper nervous and he put his hand <laughs> <laughs> he put his hand on me um and uh, he was just like you know you're nervous but it's it's good that you're nervous because that means you care and stuff like that and he made me feel comfortable because I was oh my god like you see me nervous now you should have seen me before <laughs> five foot have fallen I was like oh my god how am I gonna do this did but, you tell him how important you know gold dust was um yes yeah, someone else uh kind of said it for me uh, in, in an interview they kind of told him like what I was seeing about him mm -hmm. you know so and he's definitely an inspiration so so I, I, I know that Nyla is also, you know, following a, a similar type of mm -hmm. path as you. Uh, did you guys both come in at the exact same time? We did. Uh, oh, as far, as, as far as wrestling? Well, no, no. I mean, as oh, far as AEW. Yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, we did. Um, I, it was still funny because when the text messages came out, there was like a, a group text. And I saw Nyla's phone number in it. And I was like, ah! Oh, my God. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Kylie, too. I saw Kylie. And I, like, showed her. I was like, because she didn't know I was, like, you know, signed yet or whatever. Um, and I just show her the phone, and I'm just like, and she's like, ah! it's so funny. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so it was really cool. But Nyla's amazing. I think she's uh, gonna do amazing things. She is a trendsetter. She um, is an amazing athlete, and uh, she's gonna be some someone to watch for sure. Do you have the foresight to look ahead one month? Because it's one month till TV. Yeah. Do you have the foresight to look ahead and go, things are about to change October second? Yes. Um, I feel like this is a groundbreaking thing that's about to happen. Uh, it's the first time wrestling's been on TNT for what was it, 18 years, I said. Yeah. So I think that's going to be insane. I feel like um, the passion that Cody and everyone has putting into the company, I feel like it's just going to, you know, that's going to, they're going to take that passion and really, really like push AEW to, you know, the highest, you know, level. And I think it's going to be amazing. So. so depending on what happens tonight, if you were to go for the title, who would you rather face? Hangman Page or Chris Jericho? Uh, I love Hangman. Um, <laughs> but Chris is like someone I used to watch, obviously, as a kid. So that's just a dream match yeah. for you then. <laughs> so I think that would be really cool. My, my favorite storyline in wrestling history is the love triangle between Jericho, Christian, and Trish. Oh, yeah. My favorite storyline ever. Really? Yeah. I was like obsessed with Trish around that time. So, um, yeah, like seeing that, I just, oh my God, like as a kid, I used to mimic Trish all the time and so funny. <laughs> have you met her? I have not, but I would love to. Well, so. we're putting it out into the universe right now. <laughs> I would love to. Like yeah. she's an amazing, amazing inspiration. Do you have a favorite me. match of all time? I have a few. Okay. <laughs> Let's hear them. Okay. So every RVD versus like Dean Malenko match, I'm sorry, Rim Sarah versus Dean Malenko match, not, not, RVD, uh, RVD versus Jerry Lynn. Um, so many. The triple threat match at Mania, the women's triple threat match, Trish, Vic, Jazz, Victoria, um, Trish and Lita on Raw, main event. So many matches. Well, you named Jerry Lynn, who's now one of your colleagues. Mm -hmm. Have you, and he's he's one of your coaches, right? He's, he's a yeah. coach? Yeah. yeah, he's a coach. Has he given you any pointers? Um, He always just comes by and, um, you know, just gives words of encouragement. Never like, any, nothing like in depth, but. It was like a lot of words of encouragement. I mean, he's such a legend. He is. To hear anything from him would be like, yes, sir. That sounds yeah, great. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It's, um, it's awesome. Like even like seeing him and like Dean Malenko backstage. And like I said, Ray Mysterio and Dean Malenko's matches in WCW were like top notch. Oh, yeah. Like, you know. Have you met Ray? I have not met Okay, well, let's put that in out of the world, too. <laughs> Who else should we put out into the universe for you? <laughs> Everybody. Well, I when I walked in here. Meeting, meeting everyone. When I walked in here, you had NSYNC on the TV. I did. Your, is that your favorite band of all time? My favorite pop band? Yeah. Um, yeah, I like NSYNC. I like Five. I like everybody, obviously. Not just you. Like, if you notice, I'm talking, like, about everybody. Like, I That's just, okay. I'm, like, such a big fan of everything and everyone. Like, it's So you were a big, you were more NSYNC than Backstreet. Yes. Uh, as far as like performing wise, yes. Sorry, guys. <laughs> That's okay. Uh, obviously, Backstreet Boys sold more, but NSYNC to me, performing wise, was like. Well, Backstreet Boys were also the OGs. You know, they came yeah. out first, and then NSYNC mm -hmm. kind of came out. Just after by a couple that. of years, though. Right. But you know, I think as a result. Backstreet Boys came out in 93, I think, and then NSYNC came out in 96, 97. Look at this knowledge. Oh yeah, You're dropping like, on us. I'm like a music guru. <laughs> what, when when you were you know at the height of the dancing you were doing, 
what uh, what what did you like to dance to the most? Uh, as a kid, I used to put on Britney Spears, uh, Janet Jackson, Maya, Usher, Justin Timberlake, and Sync. Everybody, you know. <laughs> and when, when you had that, uh, you had that video where you were talking about, you know, signing with AEW. You had all these movie posters behind you. It was like it was behind you. Wait, no, which, which video? I don't know. It was like a video of a. Uh, <clears throat> I think it was Road to. I don't know, road dead something. Oh, I, okay. So I was at Subculture in Jersey City. Okay, so um, it's my hometown. It's yeah. a really, really awesome restaurant. It's like kind of very pop culture. Okay, I was, I was just gonna ask. I was like, was that your like bedroom or something? No, no, no. Okay, my bedroom looks very similar to that, but, but with not, Britney Spears posters. With like, you know, uh, actually like hot chick movie poster. Really? Like, yeah. <laughs> my favorite movie is Bring It On. So I have Bring It On, Hot Chick on there. Uh, well, a bunch of different movies. Like oh, teen, so this, this movies. is what that, yeah, this is what I was digging for here. Yeah. What What are your favorite films? Yeah, Bring It On, Hot Chick, uh, Romeo Must Die, John Tucker Must Die. Um, you know, uh, so many good movies out there. Whatever. There's something so nostalgic for me. Like I listen, I listen to everything that's 90s, 2000s as far as music. I love 90s, 2000s movies. I'm a, oh, you said you just went to. I see... have an affinity for those. You know that that you know time that time period mm -hmm. of the decade you know back when grunge and trip hop was a thing and trip hop you said you just went to see limp biscuit i did and november and Last fred november. durst recognized you in the crowd he did all right so you got to tell us this <laughs> this is a fantastic story so um <laughs> so you know how like the crowds are these days like everyone's got their cameras up which is fine you know you want to experience things in your own way and totally makes sense but so he's trying to like because he was upset that the crowd wasn't like too hype I mean, it was a long day granted like it was like a long day i mean i don't want to mischaracterize him but i think he seemed upset okay <laughs> sure that the crowd was kind of like just on their phones and like that whole thing um so once like uh he kind of like stepped down and got in the crowd uh like he was trying to like body surf but the crowd did not hold him up well like, you can't so. if you're holding your phone <laughs> exactly. yeah. so he like uh fell like almost on the floor like right in front of me and then uh he was kind of like what's up, what's up? <laughs> <laughs> and then he turned to me he was like hey, it's the wrestler and i like freaked out inside because i'm like oh my god this is like you know someone that you like loved since you were a kid and had a huge crush on so <laughs> like fred durst is like everything to me like oh. he's amazing limp biscuit is the soundtrack yeah, to sure. every wrestling promo or every wrestling build-up video Mm -hmm. 98 through 2001 yeah. or two and west borland is like probably the greatest guitarist ever <laughs> I just love him i just you know rock austin my way yeah for sure yeah that's that like, video package is just dope well we can't we can't hear the song my way without thinking of that exactly as and obviously that's the historic match it's one of my favorites as well yeah that's really awesome the rock max the, the rock match the next year is my favorite match of all time oh rock austin or, Rock Hogan, jeez. <laughs> well, actually, that's the year before, right? Oh no, it's next no, year. It's right? 18, I'm thinking, yeah. I'm thinking of 19. I don't know why. <laughs> no, well, yeah. there's so many. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was, that was the era of. Did great they matches. work again at Mini 19 as well? Wait, who worked there? Oh, did they? I've totally forgot. Oh my god. Oh no, that? no everyone's gonna hate I, us. No, no, it wasn't. A I think it was 19. Wait, did they have the? Because it was the last match, right? Rock Austin. Right, but then he came back again for Mini 20 for Rock and Sock versus Evolution, right? Yes. Okay. Wow! <laughs> Look at this dropping the knowledge yeah. here. Well, I know that mania very well. We're speaking in twenty because it's the year that Trish turned on Jericho. Uh, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> mm. And I was like, super, like, oh my god, I love this. The sassiness of Trish—it was like brilliant. Yeah. Yeah. Is there anything else you want to add in here? We've talked about a lot of different things. Forgive me for all my nervous no. <laughs> comments. And the reason why, also, why I didn't talk about the um, AW thing, I just, I just get nervous with you know contract stuff and talking about it in depth so um but yeah well, why'd I, you get nervous about your engagement i just you know i <laughs> it's a super exciting thing it is very the person exciting you're spend the rest of your life for with. sure but you know, you know it's just like oh you know it was more like oh you know this kind of thing how like, could hey. you not look at this thing <laughs> <laughs> does he wear an engagement ring too all right he wears a band okay yeah do you want to tell us how the engagement went down no. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> I, and I didn't mean to put you on the spot there. Yeah, that's see, I I'm bad at being put on the spot. Well, that's literally my thing. Wrestling's like, all about being put on the spot. For sure. Yeah. And I'm so on the spot right now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, I I want to say congratulations. Thank you. Very and acknowledge much. you for everything. Thank you. Um, that you have going on in your career and everything that's about to come. You know, for you. Yeah. Um, thank you for your time this morning. Thank you. And. Uh, 
I can't wait to see you in the ring. Thank you. All Thanks right. so much. Well, there you go. Sunny Kiss, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this interview. What a tremendous athlete. It was great hearing Sunny Kiss's story. And I can't wait to see more of him in the ring as AEW heads to TNT in just a few weeks now. If you haven't already, please click subscribe. It's really the only thing I ever ask of you. I don't have a Patreon. I'm not asking for your money. I'm just asking that you subscribe so that you can find out when more interviews like this one with Sunny Kiss will be posted. I mean, I don't think that's too much to ask. Oh my gosh, look, look at that right there. Well, let's, this is one of the things when you live in Florida, you get, uh, you get this next to the side of your pool. If you live anywhere else in the country or in any other country, you'd be like, oh, that's just cat poop or dog poop. Here in Florida, you know what that is? That is iguana poop. And uh, judging by the size of that, that is a very large iguana that pooped there. I just didn't think we could continue the video without pointing that out. So there you go. Um, thank you for checking out this chat with Sunny Kiss, my interview with Killer Cross that I also did in Chicago all out weekend. We did that one at StarCast. That'll be coming up in the next few days here. So uh, if you subscribe, you'll find out exactly when that one will go up. Uh, so thank you so much. Have a great day. If you like this shirt, and I know a lot of you guys have been focusing on it during the video. It's one of the latest ones from Collar and Elbow. Use my code CVV10. And you'll get, uh, what? Yeah, you guessed it. That's insane. Yeah, 10% off of this awesome shirt.